Tryna nick you. Tryna get across that water. I need fans in Vietnam. If you got a hustle. Hey everybody, it's the coach, and this is Madden 19. Watson in the Houston, Texas. Face off with Blake Bortles in the Jacksonville Jaguars. With that, let's get on up to Jacksonville. Standing by for the call, it's our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Guys, alongside my partner Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Godden. Charles, you look at this Jaguar team. They come in playing pretty good football. Winners of four of their last six games. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Texans, they've come in on a nice run of recent form. Four wins out of five. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. numbers for Fournette from last week 17 carries 58 yards and a score and they love what they've got in him he's the number four rusher in the league right now so you know that you have to account for him on defense which means you can play complimentary football as well throw the play action get it out to the wide receivers because they should have some open space because the defense will key on him so he loses three yards there now third down I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know, defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it, and they want to take it. Good. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Portals to call for the Jacksonville first. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play, but what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. Defensively here, you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high powered, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20. Because to me, that's the magic number. 20 points scored gives yourself your, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. And I think so, because then you turn it into a shootout. And that means your offense has to keep pace. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. And the win last week punted four times as this one's away. And he'll go ahead and field this at the five. 49-yard punt, five on the return. And the Texans are going to have the football with a first and ten deep in their own territory. And now out comes Houston. Watson on first down. Over the middle. That's caught by Miller. He's got it up to the 15. Showed off some fancy footwork there on the play. A gain of six there on first. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion. So here's second and four. On second down, here's Watson. And he's out of bounds right at the 25. His first catch there, good for 10 yards and a first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Play action for Miller. Now Watson. It got his man complete. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. Most receivers love running the post pattern. You go downfield as fast as you can, you give a head fake or two, and then you head towards the post in the middle of the field and look for the football. A tough route to cover if you get fooled with a little bit of fake in the middle of it. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 41. 
They go play action here on first down. He's going to loft one deep left side here. Oh, so close to an interception. Read that beautifully. Got his hands on it. Couldn't get it. And it's second down. One thing I know from experience is that when the deep ball is thrown and you're the defender, you've got to fight that little bit of panic that emerges. You've got to play the ball really well. It's a 50-50 jump ball play. And guess what? They took a shot. How are you going to win it? And in this case, they managed to get it done. Give him 30 yards there. The best passing attacks in the NFL often incorporate the guys out of the backfield catching the football. And that's what we just got on that play. As a primary receiver, not always just a check down, not always a safety valve. Sometimes they just get it to him right away because they have the matchup advantage. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. Kiki QT from six yards away. And the Texans have taken the early lead. One of the keys to their long winning streak has been scoring first. An ideal drive right there, getting the first six points of the ball game. Do you go... our meeting with the offensive coordinator oh, yeah. what he told us absolutely with some teams i script to probe in the early part of the game other teams i script so the ref makes a call no touchdown there wipe it off the board the Texans kick team as they'll send this one away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one and it'll come out to the 25. Bortles leads the Jags up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Green 80! Green 80! Throwing on first down is Bortles. And the catch made here by Marquise Lee. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A very solid gain of 27. And another thing that makes the comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receivers breaking away Green from 80. the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. A fake to Fournette, now it's Bortles to throw. And he just gets rid of it, throws it away. The wise move there, looked like nobody open, now second down. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it, or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it, no one got it. Now a first carry for T.J. Yeldon. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. Only a yard on the pickup there, so it leaves him needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. Well, if the cup out running play, I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again, go play action, hit him over the top. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Like what they did there, dialed up the pressure. He felt it all around him, and they were able to get to him before he could deliver the ball cleanly. Team on now as this one sent away. And now out comes Houston. Watson will bring up the Texans here, first and 10 at their own 14 yard line. Tiger, Tiger, Tiger. On first down, Watson. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he's going to be taken down right at the line. No gain, and it's second down. Brandon, just mark that under the category of just not successful. Trying to throw the ball, just didn't come work back, on that back. one. Completed it. 
No yardage. Cut. Here's Watson now on second down. Oh, he's able to outmuscle him here as he pulls it in. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. That was good coverage that was defeated by someone who just wanted the ball more, and it resulted in a big game downfield. On first and 10, Watson. That's complete over the middle to Anderson. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. That's good for a Texan first down, a 12-yard pickup. Charles, they won last week despite him not running the ball well. They told us need to get him going. Runs like that help. And they talked to us about leaning on him because, as you noted, last week they didn't have to. Still won the ball game. They leaned on other people to give them the yardage that they needed. But they really want him to be that guy, and that's what they're doing over there in this game. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. To throw is Watson setting up the screen for Miller. Man, this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage back at the 17. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up a second and 11. You know what the key to a good screen pass is, don't you? Bet you're going to tell me. Good blocking? Well, good blocking eventually. But first, it's good acting. You want to let the defenders go past you, leak out to whichever side or even in the middle where you want to set up the screen, and then you do your blocking. How about the read, though, by the defensive guys? They weren't fooled at all and actually ran with the linemen to where the with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and it's Texans football as we get going in quarter number two. They're on the march, but facing a third down here. To the air yet again, Watson. This will be caught just inside the 10. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses. It's understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. So they put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown. But that's actually okay. They got three points. It will give the defense a little bit of rest. Let them settle down over there. So all in all to me, that's a good drive. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. They've had it twice. They punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. And this is blitz coming and down he goes. DJ Reader breaking through to get him for a loss of seven. Well, the pass rush has been a real strength of late. They know how to get after the quarterback. Absolutely. Four sacks last week. That's their first one here. Anything in particular you've seen from them or on film? I think that they're winning athletically up front, winning those one-on-one -on -one battles. But also, when the offensive line wants to keep everyone in and mass protect, they know how to scheme their way back to the quarterback as well. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. Ellington now to return it. They'll call that a 61-yard punt. He got all of that one. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. 
And now out comes Houston. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about <laughs> So here, the men in charge are going to be looking at whether or not the receiver had possession of the ball as he went out of bounds. And they have to make sure that the receiver got both feet down in bounds as well. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. I'm sure as a coach, when you throw the flag, you hold your breath, then you get the verification you were right, a sigh of relief. Not only a sigh of relief, a little vindication as well, because every time you pull that red flag and throw it, you could be costing your team a timeout. Throw left side complete. That's Griffin. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Target, target, target. To throw is Watson. To throw on second down. And he finds a man with a crossing round. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. So there on that play, offensively, they ran the crossing round. Defense was in zone coverage, so as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver is crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. Well, they're currently the best in the NFL in converting on third down, so it was no surprise there that they picked that one up. And they've done it in many different ways throughout the season, Charles. Picking it up, running it, throwing it, just effective on third downs. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. DeAndre Hopkins, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Texans will add on to their lead. Fairbairn now to add the extra point. Oh, this is blocked. This is going the other way. But he doesn't get far. They're able to stop him. And after all that, the extra point attempt unsuccessful. I need your help on this one. We just saw an extra point blocked. Do you think the rain had anything to do with it getting blocked? Yeah, everything goes a little bit slower, but I'll tell you what, the snap and the hold, they look good. Yeah, and most of the time, I love when you bring that up about it getting slower. It's deliberate when it gets slower, right? Because you have to go through it a little bit more. You want to be just a little bit more careful catching the ball, putting it down, and giving him a chance to kick it. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set to go again. The results for them so far, not that great. Well... Not good at all. Three drives, three punts. Yeah, and now what you're doing is you're looking at your play sheet, trying to figure out what you're going against defensively. I wonder, are they showing them something they haven't seen? Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. Well, competition comes up in so many different ways, and right now, this unit, their competition is who's going to get the quarterback the most times. Had about five sacks last week, and we just saw their first one of this game. On second down, here's Fournette. And they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. And while there is no gain on that run, we do know coaches whose identity is rooted in 
taking it almost to the limit and then changing things up on you down the stretch. I think we're getting really close to that point in time, though, where the identity may have to go out the window. They've got to go a little bit faster in order to try and win the game. It's a gain of 11, but they're still well short. It's fourth down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. Oh, boy, he fielded it right on the goal line. A very good return that time. 18 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. DeAndre Hopkins and the rest of the offense heading back onto the field. He's already approaching 100 yards and has the touchdown, I'm sure. On that opposite sideline right now, they're scratching their heads saying, all right, what do we do? And the hard part is, even if you limit him to a short catch, he has that make-you-miss ability right. to take it for big yardage and put in the end zone again. So trying to blanket him is very difficult, but ultimately... You've got to find a way to put him on the ground, tackle him, and he doesn't make that easy. Well, they're struggling with that so far. Watson now looking to throw on second down. Oh, he's got a little daylight. Give him seven on the tuck and run, and it'll get him a new set of downs. Certainly making his presence felt in both the pass and the run game. He's having an impact. Yeah, and his first carry of the game right there. He had hurt him with his arm. Now he's showing that he can shuffle the puppies as well. A first down carry now for Miller. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. But forget about finding a the lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he was able to hold on to the football. They'll try the air now with Watson. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Anderson. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. I think it's okay, though. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. Call that a 45-yard punt. Just two yards there on the return. And the Jaguars go on offense. First down and 10. Bortles leads the Jags up first and 10 at their own 21. They'll start out on the ground. It's T.J. Yeldon. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. Well, they try to swing it on left into the flat, complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. No, they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. Now Leonard Fournette, and he'll lose yardage here, back to the 15. And now the Texans are going to stop it as they signal for a timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And the Jaguars send out their punter as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. Here's Ellington. Good blocking there, nearly sprung him. As it is, it'll go as a 19-yard return. And possession will switch hands, first and 10. Deshaun Watson and the Texans offense trot back out there. And he's been good. Two first-half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence. Does a great deal for your team. Gives them a lead, and they feel... And that's caught at the 25!
Watson hands to Miller on the draw. And they'll get him down right about the 20. Telvin Smith that time there to make the play. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Looking to throw on second down. Watson flushed out right. Oh, the ball is out. Watson lost it. And the Jags grab it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. All these years we've been watching the game, I start to get the sense that whenever it rains out, those guys have to touch the ball and carry it. They're extremely resentful about that weather. Yeah, I'm just happy I'm not resentful that we have a roof over our heads. I know that much. Yeah, maybe we won't fumble our play sheets here as we just saw the fumble happen over here. And that gets him a little room as he'll take this up over the 10-yard line. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. On second down, here's Bortles. That one complete to Yeldon. And he's got some space here. And he's brought down after a good game. A good pick up there, 26 yards. First down now, but the clock continues to move. On first and 10, here's Bortles. And that is incomplete. Down to 15 seconds now. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Alert, alert. Three and Three and Bortles will try again on second down. And this is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. Now here's a timeout as they're going to get it with eight seconds remaining here in the first half. The Jaguars on third down. They've had their troubles, just one for six. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Again, they'll throw with Bortles. And he finds Safarian Jenkins. Bortles to the former Jets, Safarian Jenkins for the Jags first down. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. And now we'll get a late timeout as it comes in the waning moments of quarter number two. So we have reached halftime. The second half of... Upon us sooner than we bargained for. Week seven, second half. Let's do it. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. Shrugs the tackle. Nice. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down at the 21 yard line. Getting set to go again, DeAndre Hopkins marches back onto the field. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working.
Breaking. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Now a first down throw, Watson. Oh, a scrap for the football, and he's going to come down with it. Give him nine there on the first down completion. We always hear from coaches how much they like to run crossing routes because they want to hit their receivers on the go, get them the ball, and keep them moving. How about when you hit a tight end that way? Okay, the receivers are going to run past you most of the time. The tight end, they can do their damage a different way, break a few tackles and really scatter some people down there. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. Here's Foreman. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. I'm no offensive mastermind, but of all the guys on the field to block, you might want to stop him. Look, I've got a very simple rule. An unblocked defender is usually your best defender, and he ended up making the play there. To the right side, complete to Miller. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. The power move there couldn't buy him much space. It'll be a three-yard gain, and it'll be third and ten. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Throwing on third down, Watson. He's going to walk one deep left, and that's caught inside the 35. A big gain of 38 there on third down. Well, they just treated third and long as simply an opportunity. This thing way downfield. Confidence in the receivers to go up and make a play, even with defenders around them. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 as they're down to the 29-yard line. Watson on first and 10, throwing the out route incomplete. That's Anderson. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. And he's able to work it here to the 8-yard line. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and it'll be second and very short. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. They'll run it again to Miller. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. A shotgun snap for Watson. Being chased out left. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield as it turned out. Couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. One man in the backfield. That's Miller. Second and goal. Now Watson to throw on second down. And he's going to go down just outside of the five, right around the six-yard line. Telvin Smith coming in hard on the blitz. He gets him down for a loss of four. That's their first time getting to the quarterback sack number one. And, you know, they had five last week, I'm remembering. And you have to find a way to slow down the pass rush, not necessarily with just protecting your quarterback. But you show them a lot of different books, and they did that in the first half. You know, different angles, different things to slow down the speed. They got to him here in the second half. Now they've got to come up with a counter to that and maybe do something different. This has been a long drive. You got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Now Watson on third and goal. A strong running. And this results in six. Touchdown. Deshaun Watson with touchdown number three here in this game and 17 now on the year. And the Texans will extend their lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical. That's one of the words you've taught me. 
and they just got it done. And slowly but surely now starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. Out is the Texans kick team as they'll send this one away. Now the return, Rashad Green. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. Fournette on the counter. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. One yard, the official pick up there, so it's going to set up third and nine. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. Green 80. Green Throwing his Bortles on third down. Throw to cross his body, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Kareem Jackson. And the return here is stopped at the 35-yard line. Okay, partner, no surprise to you. I'm going to look at this from the defensive perspective. In the rain, you have to be more cautious trying to cover passing routes. Why? The offense knows where they're going with the football. The receiver knows the route he's going to run. You have to make sure you keep your footing underneath you. After the interception, here's Watson. And Ellington has it, middle of the field. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. This quarterback now over 300 yards down for the game and time to improve on that as he's got a first and 10. And they'll run it here. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. And that's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. So if I'm an offensive coordinator, there's one thing that I know for sure. This is one of the top five teams in the NFL against the run. So when I look at my playlist, I'm probably thinking about throwing it. To throw on second is Watson. Buying time to his left. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. It's a loss of 10 yards on the play. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and target, long. Target, target. So he rolls out of the pocket left, just ends up finding his safety valve, but no game there. No game, but it looked like they were well coached on the play because he still went through his progressions, and the receivers know that when the quarterback exits the pocket, they have to find routes to run now to get into his sight lines and try and help him out, end up throwing it short to the running back, give the defense credit for not giving up any yardage. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And that'll extend this lead now up to 25. So he splits the uprights and has to be a nice feeling. Right when it left his foot, knew it was good. Yeah, just like a good three-point shooter in basketball, right? Release the ball, fall back on defense without even looking. You know it's going in the hoop. Out is the Texans' kick team as they'll send this one away. Green to bring it back. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. They've got to dig down deep. I mean, they need something right now, really anything to cling on to. This offense has struggled. 
partner, join me in a walk to their locker room at the half, okay? Because I think what we would have seen is an offensive coordinator and his and his assistant coaches getting together all their positions, then coming together as a group, going over adjustments, and then the head coach coming in and just screaming, wake up. Yeah. Let's get moving, guys. I'm kind of glad we weren't in there at halftime, actually. <laughs> I mean, you think you might have turned it on us, too? Yeah, but right now, whatever was said hasn't been working. On second down, here's Yeldon. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. But Jacksonville first down on a pickup of 17. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. Portals going to run the draw with Fournette. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. The Jaguars on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is going to be third and 13. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. Sometimes it's just not your day. There's another failure right there on third down. And the Jaguars send out their punter. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signal for and take it. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Texans will take over at the 20. Watson will bring up the Texans here first and 10 at the 20. Four down, four down. Watson on first down. The hook up on the right side to Hopkins. And down he'll go at the 25. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. On second down, here's Miller. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there. Now it'll be third down. And when you're running the football, one thing you don't want to see is a big boy coming up there and swallow you all in those D tackles and nose tackles. No, you're actually counting on your big boys to protect you from them. But on that play, the defensive tackle had the leverage, and he won the battle. No gain, correct? No gain. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Pass catcher. Used to be occasional, right? Safety valve. Throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. Back now in Jacksonville. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. Watson going to give this one to Miller. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play. And that'll lead here to a third down. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. And that one incomplete. Had some position, but couldn't hold on, and it brings up fourth down. Fourth quarter, you've got the big lead. If you're coaching, Charles, you, you still taking shots like that downfield? I'd be a little more concerned with running some clock and making sure you're taking care of the lead because you keep flinging it around, you throw a couple of picks, you can put yourself in jeopardy. Well, the Jaguars getting set to go. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. 
Bortles leads the Jags up first and 10 at their own 20 yard line. 12 mark, 12 mark. Set. Green 80. Bortles now on first down. Woody left side and he's got a man. It's Lee. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A Jacksonville first down on a pickup of 17. Defensively, you said coming in earlier in the broadcast, the magic number was 20 points for you. That's what you thought they would have to hold this offense to or, or less than that. And, wow, they've done that in a big way, haven't they? Not only have they done it, they put themselves in a great position to win this one because holding them down was paramount. If they could get it done, well, guess what? We see the end result. Right now, they have their eye on victory. And leading here in the fourth. Bortles now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. On first down, Bortles fighting to stay up on it. But in the end, the pressure too great, and he goes down. The four-time All-Pro, J.J. Watt. And it'll make this a second and long. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. It'll be a gain of six, and that's going to lead to a third and 11. You got the big lead defensively willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Green 80! Green 80! Now Bortles. And that is incomplete. Jonathan Joseph there on the coverage. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is emboldened a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Bortles. Is this intercepted? It is. It's intercepted. Picked off at the 39, and his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. If you combine last week and this week, he's got a hat trick going because he had two interceptions a week ago. He's seeing the ball so well and understanding where receivers are and positioning. I mean, just watching him work with such great technique and paying it off by actually catching the ball when he has a chance, he's helping his team in a huge way. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. It is tough to complete pass against zone defenses. The windows that you see open, they shrink pretty rapidly. How about being able to hit a moving target against the zone before the next guy can get there and make a play on come the ball? Back, Not back. easy for any quarterback, no matter the situation. And there, the defense won the battle. Here's Watson. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Tevin Smith. And he's able to get it back here to the 43-yard line. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive? Or no, you just throw that out the window. I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense mm -hmm. at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Fournette, a first down carry. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. This linebacking core, they've done a good job of keeping that running game in check, haven't they? They certainly have, and what they'll also do when this game is over is thank the guys up front, the big defensive line, because they've kept them clean, so to speak, not letting blockers get to them, allowing them to run to the football and keep that running game bottled up. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. So the screen good for only two. Now it's third down. 
One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means after run extra plays, harder to move it. To throw is Bortles. Now he's hit, and Bortles fumble. It's loose. A call it luck or skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill, but the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground, whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you maintain possession, that's all you're looking for. Well, he had it online, gave it a pretty good ride, too. But in the end, he's a victim of the crossbar. And, Brandon, you know kickers very well. I'll bet if we ask him after the game, he'll say he didn't get all of it. We've seen him hit from deeper than this in warm-ups. But here, he's a foot or so from clearing that bar. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and we're that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage, use your timeout in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. And he's able to get most of what he needed on the carry there. Seven yards on the gain, and it's third and two now. Watson found his target. It's Anderson. A pickup of 11 and a Texans first down. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. On first down, Watson steps away to his left. Time for a break. Throw left side complete. That's Fuller. Back to finish it off on EA Sports after this. So it's Texans football as we welcome you back. They've got a second down now as they look to salt this one away. And Watson's going to throw it here. Miller on the catch over the middle. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him? Either fellow receivers or offensive linemen. That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Well, this is how you shape the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw ten interceptions in a row. I'm going to stay confident keep flinging it. I'll just figure there's something wrong with the football. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. The Texans on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. This is third down and 12. Again, it's Watson. And the incompletion there, so that breaks a string of five straight hookups. It also leads to a fourth down. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Fairbairn able to put this one through. And that will extend their lead even further. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? Out is the Texans' kick team as they'll send this one away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. 380. 380. Bortles now on first down. 
And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Charles, I think back to your earlier statement about the visitors being the underdogs needing to win that turnover battle. And this defense, a forced two turnovers so far, a big reason why they lead this game. Yeah, and I know defenses always talk about getting turnovers and bunches, getting those takeaways. Two is not a bunch, but it's plenty in this game, exactly the formula they need. Now, I got to tell you, partner, I like it when you think back to something I said that actually comes true, that's actually right. That happens more often than you might think. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. He started out having some troubles back in the first half connecting with his receivers. Really hasn't gotten a whole lot better. Yeah, he's at less than 50%, and you and I both know that just won't do. So I would think about spreading things out, putting it on the receivers, make them win those one-on-one -on -one battles on the perimeter and find their way open. Now on fourth down, we've got a whistle here and a timeout as they stop it with 22 ticks to go in the fourth. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. This is brought in at the 21. It'll be a 10-yard return following a punt of 45. And control of the football, switching hands here with very little time remaining in this contest. On the NFL scoreboard, fourth quarter now at Soldier Field. The Patriots, they've opened a two-touchdown advantage in that one. Tom Brady, the star there. He threw for over 400 yards. Hauled in by Anderson, left side. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game. We want back ends, back in. Wipe my sins, wipe my sins. They can't win, they can't win. No new friends, no new friends. Football fans, they sleep again, they sleep. We wake them up, wake up. The champs is in, champion. We want back ends, back in. Wipe my sins, wipe it, wipe it. They can't win, they can't win. No new friends, no new friends. Football fans, football. They sleep again, they sleep. We wake them up, wake up. The champs is in, yeah, yeah. Wake up. Wake up, the cake up, raise up, cake. or make us do something. We don't want to do bite down on you, right now on you. Juke to the left, they dodging it. Can't play the role, you flogging Waiting on the rain for the stars in it. Four by four, double parking it. Wanna play like cars in it. 